you. Who, 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 who is that girl I see? Staring straight back at me. Get out! And that's when I realized most people can tell babies apart. Who knew? Panons, my face is back, and today's episode is brought to you by the letter P for prosopagnosia. Though we kind of already do that every episode. Most importantly, our word for today is experience. Why? Because living an atypical life when it's all you know can seem typical. Mostly because you have nothing else to compare it to. But that can't be the only reason why prosopagnosia is so difficult to diagnose, can it? Finally, in one DVD collection, all your favorite Stephanie Chase proso moments. If you don't recognize friends, family, the guy who serves you coffee every day, your coworkers, your clients, even yourself in the mirror, you might be face blind. From the beginnings of her story career to her most contemporary work. If you don't like watching movies when there are more than two characters, you might be face blind. Selections include timeless jokes like, If you look at a photo and think, boy, I have that same scarf, only to find out that's actually a picture of you wearing your scarf, you might be face blind. And, If you think a new employee was hired, but it's actually just your coworker with a new tan or a haircut, you might be face blind. Order now and get a free bonus disc with over 40, that's right, 40 hours of gut-busting prozo jokes. If people often wave and say hi to you in the neighborhood or at the mall and you have no idea who they are, you might be face blind. Or famous. Only three easy payments of 20 prozo bucks. Order now. Note, prozo bucks are not a real currency. Non-existent but outlandish shipping rates will apply because it's not a real product. Product not available in all areas because, again, it's not real. I can do this all night, folks. Anywho, in all seriousness, these are ways to identify prosopagnosia in oneself. But what about other people? The following suggestions are to be taken with a grain of salt as they were collected by individuals for non-research purposes. These are their stories. Viewer discretion is advised. Now, Stephanie, you suggested the defendant has prosopagnormis? Prosopagnosia. Yes, thank you. What makes you think the defendant has prosopagnosis? Prosopagnosia. When I first met her, she'd go from being completely friendly one day and then back to treating me like a stranger the next. Ah, holding you at arm's length. Well, not deliberately, but that's kind of how it felt at the time. But in your statement, you described her as inconsistent on a consistent basis. Well, those weren't my exact words, but yeah. Don't lie to me! It's safe to say there are clear signs and symptoms. So what is it that makes self-diagnosis so difficult? First of all, there is little information on the topic, though this is starting to change. Second, the number of locations offering an official diagnosis are few and far between, and the pictures used when talking about the disorder in the media seem to be geared more toward the neurotypical than an attempt to accurately represent the disorder. Unfortunately, anyone looking for answers would look at these and think, well, that's not what I see. This issue is just exasperated by the media. Take Hannibal. This clip is from an episode where the viewer is put into the point of view of the character with face blindness. In reality, Hannibal's distinctive haircut and facial patterns when he talked may have given him away. However, the show likely chose this visual representation in order to confuse the neurotypical audience. Another example is Faces in the Crowd. While I'm glad to see a main character with prosopagnosia, the story is told through the main character's eyes, which again requires the director to get creative with how the disorder is being visually portrayed. On top of that, the fear the character experiences has more to do with the fact that the murderer is after her and that he could be anyone. But some not familiar with face blindness could mistake it as part of the disorder itself. In their attempt to show what the disorder is like, multiple actors are occasionally playing the same character. But when looking in the mirror after her shower, her reflection is switched with different faces. While I wouldn't recognize these actors in any later scenes, I noticed these changes because of the difference in height and facial structure, such as the chin, cheekbone, and jawbone. The worst by far is arrested development. They use prosopagnosia as a slapstick comedy act and, in my opinion, portray us as oblivious fools. I understand the show is an equal opportunity offender, but as so little is known about the disorder they are mocking, I don't appreciate the portrayal. A better but a flawed example is the TV show Perception. I'll try not to spoil anything. Uh, one of the characters they speak to has prosopagnosia and, as expected, has trouble telling two characters apart. The main character does a good job of explaining the aspects of the disorder, but as revealed later in the episode, quite a few coincidences occurred for the face blind character to confuse the two other characters. Yeah, whether that's bad writing or bad research is up to you to decide. Lastly, there's Rizzoli and Isles, which features a witness to a murderer who mistakes his attacker. This one is actually pretty good, but the actor's portrayal seems to include bits of other disorders such as general anxiety and agoraphobia. 
While it's true prosopagnosia overlaps with other disorders sometimes, their failure to suggest the presence of other disorders may lead the viewer to mistake his behavior as typical behavior for prosopagnosia. To summarize, there's little information, the information out there is confusing or inaccurate, and there are a few places to actually be diagnosed. It's like the perfect storm. A series of unfortunate events, if you will. Or even one big conspiracy! The man wants us to be in the dark! It's all about control! Fight the man! Get diagnosed! Stay in school! Don't do drugs! And I was like, who doesn't recognize themselves in the mirror, you know? I mean, that's just bizarre. And then I thought about it, and I realized what was... It wasn't actually recognition, it was an intellectual understanding of what a mirror does. You know, so what I was subconsciously doing is shifting my weight or putting my hair behind my ear, I was actually testing my reflection rather than identifying myself.